to our Christmas Eve service. I'm not going to have you respond like I normally do on Sunday morning, but just know, welcome. And I am so happy to see so many faces and that you are here to share this wonderful time with us um, and take the time away from your families to be a part of your family even more so. Um, we thank you for those of you who are joining us on the live stream. Um, if you would like to participate with us, you can have your own Advent candles to light with us if you have some. Um, and those of you who are here, I hope that you grabbed a candle to share the light of Christ with us here in this room so that we can share the light of Christ out into the world. Would you pray with me as we start? Oh God of faithfulness, be faithful to us once again as we remember this evening. Move our hearts as we remember how you came to earth through a peasant girl. Move our feet in ways of justice and compassion to live out your love in the world. Move us not only to remember the past, but also to look forward to the future promise of your return. When all things will be made right. May the hopes and fears of all the year be met in you tonight. Once again, Lord. Amen. Amen. From the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as the people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
Good evening. We light the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love once again. And we, are, we remember that the fulfillment of the promises of Christ's birth. We also look ahead to the day when all these things will truly be made right in the return of Christ. We light the candle of hope. Light the candle of hope as a reminder that hope is all around us. It is through us, through Emmanuel, God with us. We light the candle of peace. We relight this candle, and it's not as a denial of the places in our lives and in our world where there is no peace, but it's a reminder to call us to peace, even in the midst of turmoil. Light the candle of joy. As we light this candle, we're reminded that joy is deep, and it's abiding, and it's rich, and it's rewarding. Joy is like a well. It's a well that never runs dry, and it overcomes trouble. And last week, we light the candle of love. And when lighting the candle of love, we reflect these words. For God so loved the world that God sent his only son. And God's love is in our hearts. May we work to see the love of God at work in the world. Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, to, in Galilee to, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time for the baby to be born came, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them.
8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. When the, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one, to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told to, about the child. And all who were heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary returned, excuse me, Mary treasured up all of these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. We have journeyed through four weeks together expecting the coming of Christ and tonight tonight we recognize that and celebrate that coming we rejoice in the one who came not in the glory of a palace nor with riches or with power but as a peasant in a manger we rejoice in the one who is the fulfillment of hope the bringer of peace, the creator of joy, and love itself. We illustrate the presence of Christ with the lighting of this Christ candle, this white one, as a symbol of that light that has come into the world 
and continues to come. The light shone in the darkness that night and continues to shine in the darkness of our world today. We look upon this candle. We are reminded of the true light that came, but we also look ahead to the hopeful anticipation of his return when all things shall be made right. John 1, 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was the wor in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. grace and truth. This is the gift of Christmas. This is the gift of Christ. And tonight, as we remember that Christ entered the world as this gift, this gift of love, grace, and truth, 
He is our ultimate example of hope, peace, joy, and love. He is our greatest example under any circumstance. He is love. And his love was poured out in humility and in sacrifice for the whole world. You, me, the whole world. So we celebrate this amazing gift of love tonight by remembering the past, but also we look ahead to the future. And we remember this gift tonight and we look ahead of how we can share it with one another and those around our community and around the world so that we may love each other well. The true gift of Christmas is that this light and this love is for the whole world. As we prepare our hearts for Christmas and we prepare our hearts to leave this space, may we remember that we are to be a light to the world as we light from the Christ candle, be reminded that light is being reignited in yourselves to go out into the world and ignite someone else's candle and someone else's and then someone else's, bringing the light of Christ into every situation. We are to love our families well to love our friends, our neighbors, and even our enemies, that they too may know this great gift of light and love. So as we light our candles tonight from the Christ candle, be reminded of being a bearer of the light of Christ to the world around you. Would you stand with us, please? Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is a night of the dear Savior's birth.
As you leave this evening, don't leave this light here. Take it with you. Carry the light of Christ wherever you go into every situation. May we remember hope, peace, joy, and love for more than a season. For Christ is more than a season. May you love one another and celebrate Christmas in a most beautiful way. And thank you for joining us this evening. Have a blessed evening. Merry Christmas.